I was so tired of gas and groceries being so cheap. I wanted to pay more for my food. That's when I discovered dip. After electing dip, my food and energy prices skyrocketed and I couldn't be happier. With dip, I finally get to experience the joys of communism right here at home. But that's not all. Along with significantly higher food and energy prices, Dipshizzy helps me contribute more to foreign wars. I was so tired of all the peace and prosperity we had under that mean orange guy. Now I can sleep easy knowing my hard-earned money is paying for bombs on the other side of the world. Side effects may include extreme inflation, reduced purchasing power, and an overwhelming sense of wanting to hang tampon dispensers above urinals. Consult your dad before starting Dipshizzy. Do not take Dipshizzy if you are not an idiot. Thanks to Dipshizzy, my dreams of a more expensive and complicated life have finally come true. Thanks to Dipshizzy, I can't afford And that means everything. Now's the time to ask your dad about Dipshizzy and learn how communism works. But we will because we're going to put in the hard woke over the next 77 days. <laughs> <laughs> Dip shizzy. Oh, man. Oh, I might have to go consult uh, with my doctor about this dip shizzy, man. Um, uh, but she, they did say you don't need it if you have common sense, though, right? <laughs> oh, man. Oh, I love this ad. I like when ads, you know, they supposed to be parody or satire, but it's actually like on point. I mean, because honestly, this is this is how I kind of envision her in the White House to send back or uh, hun Biden. Like, yeah, you know what? Mm. Let's go ahead and raise these prices on everything. Uh, Big Pharma mad that they didn't come over the first. I'll just say that. Any home. A little bit unrelated, but you're going to catch it. I just got a call from somebody claiming that they're waiting on me to call them back to approve my money from some underwriter. And I keep getting the same call from different numbers. What do we call that? Spam. And what sucks even more is knowing that I'm only getting these spam calls and text messages because these big companies can't keep my data safe. I don't know if you know it, but Ticketmaster recently got hacked. Over half a billion users' data was sold on the dark web. This means they got their credit card info, their phone number, their email address, their address, and their full name. And I may not know you personally, but I know for a fact you don't want no fraud to happen. In that case, you'll be happy with the spam. And these big companies ain't doing nothing about it because it hasn't affected them in a way that they feel like they need to do something. Wow, they have to collect our data, but they ain't trying to protect it. And that's why I use Aura the sponsor of today's video. Aura alerts me when my data has been breached or leaked on a dark web, and it gives me fast fraud alerts if anyone tries to use that data to access my credit card or bank accounts. And it removes my information from data broker websites so I get less spam. And they offer tons of features like VPN, like transaction monitoring, like antivirus, password manager, parental controls, and even identity insurance. And it's all in one affordable. So if my info was compromised in that breach that Ticketmaster had, I wouldn't even be tripping because I know Aura is in the back and they got my back and they're always on because I'm not only trying to protect myself, I'm trying to make sure that my family stays protected as well. And I'm not leaving my family vulnerable to any data breaches. And if you don't want to either, please go visit Aura.com slash Kingdom Reacts and get your first two weeks for free if you want to get that link without having to type it in yourself just go to the description man i made it readily available for you to click on moving on uh the u.s marine a retired navy seal sees a woman wearing a hat that said vote for kamala harris in california he uh, actually politely stopped her and asked her why and he didn't try to like throw uh his support for trump or somebody else down her throat or nothing like that in fact he just kind of let her um expose herself so i'm here in california and i met a woman with a hat on that said vote for uh kamala harris and i'm always interested in both sides call me curious george so we talked a little bit she realized i was a veteran i said um why is it that you're voting for kamala i'm very interested in this and she said well you're a veteran don't you know and I said, no, ma'am, I don't. She said, well, Trump said that all veterans and all service members who died for their country are suckers and losers. And I said, ma'am, I think that was hearsay. I thought that was hearsay. Now, 
just to uh you know uh, get some context after i watched this video i scoured the internet searching for this alleged video of what trump uh you know trump saying forgive veterans and things of that nature i personally couldn't believe it when i first heard it anyway because trump has always showed respect and held uh veterans in high regard i thought that was hearsay and she said no. let me rewind it so you can hear exactly what she said and losers and i said Oh, Man, wow. I, I rewinded enough. I'm sorry. Mala, I'm very interested in this. And she said, well, you're a veteran. Don't you know? And I said, no, ma'am, I don't. She said, well, Trump said that all veterans and all service members who died for their country are suckers and losers. And I said, ma'am, I think that was hearsay. I thought that was hearsay. And she said, no, go check it out yourself. I actually saw a video of Trump saying out of his mouth that all veterans and service members that died for their country are suckers and losers. And I was pretty taken aback by, by, by this because I had never seen this personally. And if that was true, if Trump did say this, I would immediately disengage from him. And I think most veterans would because it's so far out there and radical and extreme and egregious, right? That's just a place you don't go with me and most people that I know. All right. So I was so taken aback by this and she was so convincing that I couldn't even argue with her. I couldn't even say, no, there's not a video like that because she was so diehard. She goes, just go check it out. Just go Google it. So after we got done talking, you know, I, I went into this deep dive of information, researching all over the net. I tried so hard to find this video because I wanted to see what she was talking about because she was so convincing. And after a long search, I found that there was not one shred of evidence, all right, not one shred of actual factual evidence of video of him saying it out of his mouth that, that veterans and service members that died for their country were suckers and losers. And the sad thing is about this scenario is that the nice lady that I ran into on the street with a vote for Kamala Harris hat on, actually really 100% unequivocally believes that she saw that video. She was totally convinced. And it just goes to show you, if you spread a lie to the masses long enough, they will actually be convinced that they saw it, not just heard it, but they actually saw him say this. And that's how dangerous misinformation being spread out to the masses is over a long period of time. It can actually change the way an entire country looks, hears, and then acts. And then pretty soon Rome is burning and you know the rest of the story. Would love to hear your comments below. And that's another touch point. Which brings us to the bigger issue. The biggest issue is that mainstream media has such a stronghold on people that all they have to do is claim that Donald Trump says something. And that is enough to convince people that they actually seen and heard Donald Trump say these things. Now, notice that the veteran said that he didn't even bother trying to bring up any debunking points or, you know, he didn't even bother trying to uh, tell her about his position because she was extremely passionate. Um, and, um, she she seems to really be convinced that she uh seen that video and that's that's dangerous bro like if you have a whole generation of people whom you can convince uh who can convince themselves that they seen something that they didn't you're in a very powerful position somebody says a lie can travel halfway around the world while the truth is still putting on its shoes and that's a quote from Mark Twain. It's sad to see that there uh, is a contingent of brainwashed sheep that actually believe that uh, believe the suckers and losers propaganda. Uh, it's like some inception level garbage. This is why Kamala Harris and her ick uh, represent a real danger in America as we know it. Yeah, man, because if all you can do is say that somebody said something without giving anybody physical proof and that motivates them and uh, makes them feel compelled to be anti that guy, 
Oh, you win it. Somebody says, my former in-law family had my daughter convinced that her uncle's dog had bitten her when she was little and had to go to the hospital for stitches. The dog died five years before she was born. It's the same principles. Wow. 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 The Democrats have been lying about Trump calling veteran suckers and losers for months and months. It has been disproven many times. I cannot believe that Kamala Harris actually repeated that lie again at the Dems convention. Uh, Kamala is not presidential material anyway. And of course, the only thing that they're going to have to uh, do right now is repeat name calling. They don't have any policy to run off of. They don't have anything to back up their claims with the veterans and nothing like that to run off of like Donald Trump does. You know, so what they do, they just spew. They spew. That's all they're going to do. Uh few more um this is sad horrific this is sad and horrific that people are spreading lies first i would have asked her on the spot to pull a video up and show me the video definitely but you know in this day and age is actually controversial and racist and homophobic and misogynistic to actually ask somebody to validate their claim uh, if you didn't know, I just wanted to inform you. Yeah, you, you can't just ask somebody to validate their claims. That's that's you, you that's being racist in 2024. OK, trust me, I found out the hard way. <laughs> uh, uh, somebody said that's why when Democrats say something idiotic like that, you uh, you stay there, do the Google search so they can see that they're wrong. Yeah, but you know, they, ain't, they don't care about that. They're going to translate it to, oh, you got to go home and do some more digging. They're trying to take it off of the internet. You got Trump over here trying to take everything. And uh, that's definitely not the case. We know that Trump ain't got no ain't in with the deep state who's also in with Big Pharma and all that. But President Trump did more for the military veterans than any other president in modern day history. Don't take my word for it. Take this retired major general. Is it Major General? Yep, Major General. Yep, retired Major General. Check it out. Listen, I am a proud American veteran, and I'll definitely be voting for Donald J. Trump for President and Commander-in-Chief of the United States Army. Why am I voting for President Trump? Because President Trump did more for the military veterans than any other president in modern-day history. And I'll repeat that. President Trump did more for the military veterans than any other president in modern history. And you can fact check that. A vote for President Trump is a vote for a strong, resilient armed forces, one that's focused on defending our great nation and the American people, not distracted by pronoun training or other woke policies. Not only that, we have combat veterans for Trump. As a Marine Corps veteran, five combat tours, as an oil field worker, and as a dad. This is, today is a win for our country. They're scared, y'all. They're scared. If it ain't obvious now, y'all blind. USA, baby. USA. President Trump, we salute you. I'll say this, man. From what I've gathered, uh, Trump's loves are men and women in uniform. He's shown them nothing but respect. I've seen him salute him. I've seen him fix hats. I've seen him, you know, uh, walk up to him, have conversations, take photos, you know, salute, like show nothing but gratitude and respect towards them. Uh, my son is in the back, obviously laughing and I got to close the door next. But anyhow. But uh, something this current administration knows nothing about is respecting um, uh, the men and women in uniform. The disdain that Joe and Kamala have shown veterans is completely despicable. The president reportedly said, and I emphasize reportedly said, that those who sign up to serve instead of doing something more lucrative are suckers. I want to address what is quite clearly fake news. The story in The Atlantic has been categorically debunked by eyewitnesses and contemporaneous documents. There is nobody that feels more strongly about our soldiers, our wounded warriors, our soldiers that died in war than I do. 
that he cares about this country. More importantly to me, he cares about my son, he cares about the military. He's been so caring to me and my family. And two, I appointed Johnson to the Academy. I just want you to know that. Just clap for that, you stupid bastard. Well, now come these upsetting images of hundreds of troops sleeping on the floor of a parking garage. And if this makes your blood boil, you are not alone. President Biden facing backlash for what critics are calling a lack of respect after walking out on a distinguished veteran during a Medal of Honor ceremony at the White House. In reference to the checking of his watch, that didn't happen just once. That happened on every single one that came out of that airplane. I actually leaned into my son's mother's ear and I said, I swear to God, if he checks his watch one more time, and that was only probably four times in, um, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't look at him anymore after that. I found it to be the most disrespectful thing I've ever seen. President Biden, he's often called the consoler in chief. He, he does talk to families who have lost loved ones because of his own experiences. Have you uh, experienced that from him as you've been coping with the death of the no. no. Have you spoken to him? No. He has not reached out to our family. We've actually reached out to the White House and have never heard back. Two minutes later, he walks in with him and Jill Biden and their little entourage of people and, like, photographer. And uh, we have a president who does not understand those solemn moments. He is a master at capturing the anger of the American people, but he is not skilled at capturing the hearts and the minds and the souls of the American people. Man, watching that was really heartbreaking. My heart broke a few times for that man, um, especially at the part where Joe Biden, what do you want? What do you want, really? Uh, it just also tells, show, goes to show you how these loonies, they're just scared, man, because the actual president has a, a brain of just, it's just air right now. And his sidekick of a vice president can speak without a teleprompter. Yeah, man, this country, man, this country.